Welcome to Tell Me Gida. 2005, UNESCO declared of Megiddo, uh, Megiddo National Park as the World Heritage Site. Da -da -da. Mm -hmm. And we're going to visit it, and it's uh, such a beautiful place. Uh, in Corona time, they were smart to renovate that place. Um, a lot of the Christians that I know are visiting uh, this amazing tell. Although I must say that it's difficult to guide her because you can see a lot of stones and then we will have to build uh, the area together, but it's such an amazing place. The Israelite turned that place into um, royal palaces, but with a lot of of uh, church and horses. Then the entrance that we will see will be a little bit difficult to enter. Then they build a special entrance for them. But we will go, if it's okay by you, to visit the ancient gate. On the way, you will be able to refill your bottles with pure water, with fresh water, and it's good for tourists as well, mainly because usually it's quite hot here. I'm at, let's say, um, October 2021. It's excellent, I must say, but, uh, say, but there's no rain uh, in the future of, let's say, of the next two weeks, which is a little bit sad for us. And um, water is one of the problematic uh, subject in uh, in Israel until today, although um, right now we are using desalination factories and water is not such a problem as it used to be. Look at the valley. Beautiful, isn't it? Then here, for example, you can actually see another ancient um, water system area. You actually use the stray, the stairs all the way down to collect the water. And they collect the water, you can see canals here, from every single place. I'm talking about the rain. And let's climb up. There's a beautiful view. You can see the Jezreel Valley. Uh, Nazareth is summer there. Ah, oh, now we can see Nazareth. And then we can understand that Jesus saw all those sights from his window. At the house of Mary. The first gate that you see here is from the Canaanite um, city. And I'm, when I'm talking about the Canaanite, uh, I'm talking about, let's see, uh, four millennium BC. Four millennium BC. Yeah, you got the message. It's like two chambers. And the funny thing that uh, most of the most of the time at the Kenana time there were no walls here. That's what gonna, what we're gonna see. And look at the bottom of it. Basil stone, which is very tough stone. If you want to destroy it, it will be difficult. And limestone is above it. The wood here will tell us uh, how we found it. Everything beneath it is from the Canaanite time. Uh, above it is the stones from the Canaanite as well. But you can see that resurrection. Restoration line. You can imagine that the soldiers can be here. The most important part of the city uh, is the outer gate, because not everyone could enter to the city. The city was owned by 
usually the government than George. We here, the old man used to be here, salesmen were outside. Although the, there was no wall, people didn't dare to enter the city without a reason. Next to the entrance, and let me show you where we are. Hello, gate. Hello, Canaanite gate. Um, next to it, there's a wall, and the only thing that left from the Canaanite uh, palace that were here uh, is that wall. It was a very big um, uh, temple or palace. Sorry, palace. Um, Syrian style and it been destroyed the 12th century it been destroyed together with uh, the gate uh, the gate itself and at the end of the gate uh, the use it remember it's not really a gate it was only for sir uh, kind of ceremonies to tell the people this is a city don't go in unless you do have a a reason uh, we found their ovens or something like that then they use it as part of the palace now when we are climbing we are climbing in history but to her earlier period we're reaching the Israelite gate which is right there but remember the carriages chariots horses they enter to the city from here let me show you how it actually used to look like there it is we are looking at the Canaanite gate that actually use and now we have to have you have to turn left and up to enter to the inner six chambers gate house. Then let's go in. Is it that from King Solomon? Why it's important for me if it's from King Solomon or not? Because we know that the Bible mentioned three cities that he built and he built gates like that, exactly like gay, like that. Then in that case, it is a very important issue. But as you can see, six chambers, we didn't excavate that part. But we believe that it's not from the 10th century BC. It's actually might be, might be from the 8th century BC. Jeroboam the second year of Amashini built it. Now we just enter to the city from the Israelite gate. Beautiful, beautiful. Remember, there are 30 layers of cities in that uh, tell. And we already talked about the tell. If it's a very important place, then they will destroy the old one and they build their city on top of it. And part of a problematic guiding here is that, as my wife said, Lots of stones here. Where are the coffee place? Where are the shops? It's not easy to guide here, but we will do that. We will use our imagination to build here palaces, to build hill temples. I want you to understand that that place is mentioned 
in so many scripts. Let's talk about the uh, Jewish Bible, the Old Testament. And what about Armageddon? The New Testament. And uh, it's actually been published at the Syrian and Egyptian places. Then we are talking about the only place in Israel that mentioned in so many, so many outside souls. It's amazing. And it was built for war. Remember the first war, the second war was here, and the last one will be in the future. And uh, when we'll sit at the viewpoint, I will talk about some of um, the events that happens here, happened here in the past. Yes, lots of imagination, but it's such an amazing place to visit. Hi. Hello, I'm from Tel Aviv. And where are you from? Uh, Gush Etzion. Gush Etzion. Yeah. All right, enjoy. They're from uh, so Southeast Jerusalem. And we reached the Northern Stables. Again, is it from the 9th century, 9th century BC or 8th century BC? We don't know. But look how beautiful it is. Stables. Horses. Remember, the horses must be here in the city. Why here? Because from here we, we will attack the enemies. From here we will defend our city. Uh, Megiddo is not only that tell. Remember, that tell is kind of uh, the Acropolis. Megiddo is from uh, is all over every part of the valley belongs to Megiddo it was such a huge city and we are looking only the Acropolis and if I'm talking about the Acropolis this is the Canaanite uh, temple part and they used to have only one uh, temple area when it been destroyed someone else built his temples on top of it Look at the round temple temple there. We will see it from the from the viewpoint there. But before that, if we saw the stable. Let us visit the northern palace. Looks like that. And if you remember the video that I show you of the model, uh, almost, I mean, there are so many layers beneath it. Then if I'm talking about the temple, is it King Solomon temple? 10th century? Or maybe it's from Heichab time? 9th century? It doesn't matter. But what is important is that we do have evidence from the kingdom of Israel. The Bible was written by the kingdom of Judea. Israel and Judea were in a way found from time to time enemies from time to time they were friends, but the book was written from their perspective. And in their perspective, Israel, for example, Ahab, weren't the most popular people. Before we will reach the um, viewpoint, I want you to see a little bit of the area of the temple, the secret area. It's a mess because we excavate here a little bit, excavate 
uh, there a little bit and they build on top of each other then you can see the round uh, round altar above it used to be another temple which is uh, not so exist because you know when you're excavating you are taking the layers above it then here it is everything here was for serving God I'm talking about the Canaanite gods and let's talk about that what's happened here when they excavated a place and they started to do that around 100 years ago they didn't know how to, what to do and one of the options at the ancient time is to cut a piece of cake and to reach the bedrock that's how we know that there are at least 30 layers of cities and if you can see here then the top one is from uh, the iron which is the Israeli uh, time later on we are going to the late bronze and uh, uh, middle bronze period and more of ancient uh, ancient uh, period it's it's not so important for us the only thing that it's matter is that there are so many layers of it and if we're talking about that look at that from 7000 BC let me see if you can see it yes you can all the way here to the Persian time and now we know how many layers because we reach the bedrock and the upper part of course it's the uh, new uh, periods and uh, one of the last were the Israelite and the Assyrian and look at that look how beautiful it is what we can see from here the Gilboa mountains are there that's that's where um, King uh, King Saul and his son Jonathan died. We'll go to that way. It's the northern part of Samaria. Remember, this is part of Israel, the ten tribes. Today, it's the West Bank. Um, here, you can see the beautiful valley of of Jezreel. But I just came. I cannot see it. It's somewhere there. If I don't know if you can see a beautiful round shape mount. Let me take my glasses off. Well, it's actually there. Then I hope that you see it. This is Mount of all the Transfiguration Mount. And to the left, I'll do that slowly. You can see the white buildings on top of the hill of Nazareth, city of the uh, city of uh, Jesus. Then you can imagine then that it's such an amazing place for it. Now let's talk a little bit about things that happened here. And um, there's so many that I collected. I, I will uh, we'll talk only about a few important places. Uh, but before we will do that, remember that I was taking a video of uh, the main road. The reason I did it is because of two small hills here are hiding it. Then behind it, and maybe we will see it from the other viewpoint, uh, is the junction, the, the entrance, the narrow entrance to Jezreel Valley. And if you will enter here, that's it. You can, you do have a reason, a good reason to control the world, then it's worth it. The problem was always about Egypt against Mesopotamia. You can call it in so many names, Assyrian, Babylon, Hit, whatever. There are so many. It's always by north against uh, south, and in the middle, it's Canaanite and, uh, and Israel. 
then we know that that place was already uh, um, uh, we found some evidence from seven millennium millennium BC the Canaanite are from the fourth millennium BC and he saw the area of the temples at the 15th century uh, Totumes the third the king of Egypt rich here and he actually surprised us from that junction that he saw I mean it's so narrow that the people of Megiddo knew that he's coming but he they knew that he will come from another entrance which is wide and better than they actually protected that area and they didn't protect the narrow path and that that's uh, what Totimus uh, the third actually knew that he reached here but it took him seven months to conquer the tell that we are sitting on it to show that shows you how important that place uh, was and then he lo it took a lot of uh, chariots, um, horses, gold and as I understand this is the historic first record battle in the world and we are talking about the last one that will, will happen here one day another time that I want to to reach with me is 14th century another hundred years um, and we are talking about Egypt again uh, if we'll go to the place by, by the name uh, Imarna we will find six letters that were written from that king to the king of Egypt and he talks about uh, tax problems and that one of the city of Shechem is making him hard life and again we understand that at the 14th century that was part of Egypt Joshua conquered Israel but he didn't conquer Megiddo mm -hmm. very very important place to um, to uh, attack and they knew how to defend themselves um, only King Solomon built Megiddo, Hazor and Gezer then at the 10th century we know that that was already an Israelite city let's go to the 10th century um, BC Sishak which is another king of um, of Egypt he conquered in his journey a city uh, that city he conquered uh, lots of cities in Israel but he mentioned Megiddo Again, if you mention Megiddo it means that this is such an important place and if you mention Megiddo how do we know it let's go to Karnak one of the temples there and on the wall of the temple we will find uh, all the details of his journey that was at the 10th century BC then think about let's build together palaces of King Solomon and Ahab and um, Jehu, one of the most important kings of, Ju of Judah, not of Israel. He was here. He was here. And, um, and he def was defeated by the king of Egypt. Because as we believe, he actually helped the northern countries that promise him as I believe that he will be uh, they will free him that he died here he was an amazing um, an amazing king that deal with God I mean deal with God he actually accepted God and only God one God no idols nothing like that and because he died here the rumors started to talk about the last days when God will save the world or Israel he will do that here because that God that King Jehu was an amazing King but he died here in um, 
in war. But there are so many other things. Um, I made a mistake. I made a mistake. Then delete the last sentences, please. As you can see, I'm trying to uh, make um, one short video. Then in that case, Joe, king of Israel, king uh, killed here, uh, Hezekiah, king of Judea. Again, a war between Israel and and uh, Ju uh, Ju um, Judah. And in 7032, Tiglat um which was the king of uh, the Assyrian, reached that place, destroyed Israel, and took the ten tribes to here. And later on, you might see some temples uh, there. And then at the end of the 7th century, Egypt came to here and our amazing uh, um, king, Josiah, he died here. And from that moment, the idea that it might be the place of the last days, because he was an amazing king, very good king, very good king for his people and for God himself. Then as you can see, there are so many things to deal with. And let's continue our journey. Oh, father and son, what a beautiful thing to see. For that, we will have to go back and we will continue then. Um, Oh, forgot about the date tree. Why well, there are so many date tree? And if you look around you, there are not a lot of date trees in that area because it's usually the date trees are good for uh, the desert. The one who came to help the excavators 100 years ago were Egyptian, and we believe that they brought with them a lot of dates and. They threw the seat to the ground, and that is the result. Day trees until today. Mm, I'm talking about food. A little bit hungry. Then we are living the northern temple and the stables. And we are climbing up to the other side. We are skipping the uh, secret Canaanite temple part mainly because we cannot go in and I must say that there's not a lot to see from above you can see it better instead of going out it looks like this is the mother and the child and the father is already there we will turn left now and up They renovated the path. It used to be made of sand and was muddy in winter time. I wish that we will have rain soon because we need rain. It's still COVID-19. That's why I'm, I'm here alone. And if you like that video, which is simple and uh, I think interesting, although it's very difficult to guide in that place, then please subscribe my channel. And when you will reach uh, the description, you will find there uh, the links for my Instagram and my Facebook account. And uh, I will be more than happy if you will will uh, be part of it, part of my family right now. It's um, it's a grave, which is <laughs> difficult to see as well. But it's a tomb 
um, beautiful tomb looks like a Greek tomb and we don't know who was buried there uh, we didn't find anything in it then uh, we don't know how to date it uh, we call it the Ye uh, tomb where's your imagination of course you can see a tomb here you can see the stairs all the way up and the tomb was above I can see the tomb. I'm kidding. It's difficult to see the tomb. I know. I know. But the silo that you will see now, it's easy to see. What I want you to understand, lots of palaces here, lots of horses, lots of soldiers, lots of money. And what about um, food? And let's, let's go see it. Here it is. This is a, pal a public grain silo from the time of King Jeboram. The second, the same one from the 8th century BC. And what is beautiful to see that it's huge. And there's one way to go down with a sack full of grain. And there's another way to climb up. For that, I have to go to the other side. show it to you you can see part of it here it goes all the way down till then then at least it will be easier for them to deal with it um, the southern palace there's nothing to see I know I know I know I know the southern palace was right here and it was such in a big shape with a big courtyard and, and rooms um, Sadly, because Chicago a university came to here, they decided to dig to see what's actually happening beneath it. Then what's left for us from that palace is that. And we are here, just near the entrance. You can see that it was big. You can see that it was big. Now let's continue. And if we're here, you can see the other. Here it is. Let me. Done. You could climb up from here and the other one from there. Then they didn't have to fight between themselves. Megiddo, Megiddo, Armageddon. Remember we talked about the meaning of Megiddo, the name? Um, when you're building a tell, city on top of a city on top of a city, it looks like a small hill, a small mount. Then a mount in Hebrew is Al. And the place called Megiddo. Ar Megiddo, Armageddon. Got it. Oh, what a lively wind. There are some horses here. Why? The silo is was seven meters deep. Um, Eleven meter diameter 1,000 ton of wheat gosh <laughs> where we are now the southern stables horses were very important here we already know it then what we're gonna see soon 
is that place. Here they will make some exercise and training and the stables were, uh, were there. We will see mainly the stable area. We're talking about 150 horses, uh, just like at the northern part. Um, again, 8th century BC. Let's go and see it. They renovated it a little bit and you will see it, especially the horse uh, trough right here. And, and there, and you can see the horses. Some scholars believe that it was unstable, mainly because the, the horse is supposed to be mini horse. But we am high to deal with what it was. It looks like a stable. That we were we had lots of stables here, something like 150 horses. Hallelujah for that. Water. I didn't drink for a long time, and um, that's not good. But there are coolers in every every inch, every place here that you can refill your bottles. And Americans, my dear, you can do it too. It's pure water. Think about water. Without water, you cannot survive here. But because it's a war city. They, they prepared themselves for war. They had to be sure that the water would be inside the walls. The only problem is that the spring was outside their wall. And guys, I must drink. Then uh, you won't feel it, but you will see me, you will hear me in less than one second happier. I'm happier. Oh. Water, 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 water. Then, the water system. First of all, the one who suffer were the women because they had to carry the water. We do have a shaft here. Um, it's quite deep. It's like 35 meters deep shaft. And another tunnel of 80 meters that reached the water. The wall was here, somewhere there. Yeah, at the other side of the shift. And the spring was there. Then the water was outside the wall. By covering that place, they actually built a blocking wall. The water kept here and they had to go all the way through the stairs. To reach that place I'm gonna do that for you I'm gonna do that for you but before that I want to go to the gallery let's see if I can actually uh, walk um, all the way there then before we will actually huh, something down around 187 stairs and then climb up another 77 uh, I want to go to see the Galleria. Let's see the gallery is open and it's not a museum. Yeah, I can climb it back, but that's going to be crazy. The reason I must do that is that my car is there at the entrance, but because I want you to see every part of Megiddo and you can see the kibbutz Megiddo in front of you I will do it for you and then I will go out from the blocking road and well, remember it's not blocked anymore I will go out and I will have to make a round tour and then to climb up to the parking lot and then here's the gallery <laughs> I cannot actually See, that was the ancient water system. 
uh, these to reach that area uh, to get the water. But the wall were here, remember? The wall were here. Then in that case, uh, they wanted to keep the water inside. Then, in less than a minute, I will be already at the other side. The Syrian village and palace were here. I'm talking about the 7th century. And the uh, water system we, we built, uh, we was built at the time of the Israelite kings and was um, used until the end of the Assyrian time here, 7th century. In less than a minute I will be there, in less than a second I will be there. Let's get used to the darkness. And of course I'm the only one here, we saw a group of uh, religious Jewish girls studying here. And look at that. And in less than a second I will be there as well. We are still at the shaft. Amazing. You can understand if they did that, then you can imagine um, how beautiful were the palaces and how important that place was. Spooky. And we reach the tunnel, which is beautiful as well. And What's so cool here? I remember that as a child, that was the coolest part. But at the end, the bus was waiting for us, and now we have to make a run tour until we reach the entrance. But it's so cool. It reminds us a little bit of the city of David, water system as well. Beautiful place to visit. All right, you can see the water of the spring here. I'm not sure that I want to drink it, but this is the water that saved the people who live here. And guys, instead of going all the way back, I will climb 77 um, um, stairs. And the sunny area is where the blocking wall were. And the uh, enemy didn't know that the water was so close to them. That's how they survived. Then, I hope that you enjoyed that video. And, um, because it's really difficult for me to guide you here. What I want you to understand is the importance of that place. See you in my next video. And don't forget to subscribe my channel, please.